idea coming at ya. Don't let the youthful looks fool you. I'm a regular titan of tinkering and maestro of all things mechanical. Tantalizing technology and gallons of gadgets are my domain. Luckily, the good old US of A is brimming with cool engineering, so we'll have plenty to talk about. Check out those massive crude oil tanks. Evidence of the petroleum industry that runs thick in Alaska. This state has loads of natural resources, and oil is one of the most valuable. The Alaskan Pipeline, a technical wonder running 800 miles across the Alaskan interior, makes it easy to transport oil from inland oil fields to shipping ports on the coast. It's way sophisticated. The fun doesn't set with the sun in these parts, because nighttime means a chance to see the dazzling Aurora Borealis, better known as the Northern Lights. Imagine awesome waves of colored light streaking and arcing through the midnight sky, and only up here near the North Pole. How's it work? Think fluorescent bulb on a global scale. Electrons stream from the far-off sun and pow! Collide with atoms in the high Arctic atmosphere, generating brief flashes of light. Seen from the ground, it's pure magic. The three objects here, a Russian ship anchor, a Tlingit Indian totem pole, and a Russian cannon, pretty much sum up Sitka's island history. Russian sailors and traders arrived in Sitka, met the native Tlingits who had lived here for centuries, and pretty much pushed them out. There were several big battles in 1802 and 1804, but modern weapons like the Russian cannon meant that Sitka would become Russia's Alaskan capital for the next 60 years. That's a prospector statue, standing proudly in front of the Pioneer House. It's a symbol of the grit and perseverance pioneering people needed to start a life in Alaska a century ago. The Pioneer House is actually the first building around here designed as a retirement home for older people. Even the hardiest gold prospectors eventually ran out of steam and needed to settle down. The Cathedral of St. Michael's here in the center of the business district stands out as a symbol of Sitka's Russian past. The cathedral was built by the Russian Orthodox Church back when Russia controlled the area. It's a sophisticated design built from a simple material, hardwood, which might explain how the whole thing managed to burn to the ground in 1966. What we see here is a faithful reproduction. Bye for now. Feel free to call me back for more techno facts. What a blast! Let's orbit around the space gear here at Florida's JFK Space Center. It may look like a stubby airplane, but this is actually the Explorer, a full-size space shuttle replica that people can climb aboard. The space shuttle represents a significant improvement over earlier rocket technologies. It blasts straight up into space like a traditional rocket, but glides smoothly back to Earth like an airplane. This gentle re-entry saves a lot of wear and tear, and allows the shuttle to be reused many times. Talk about your high-tech recycling! This place is a tech lover's dream. The John F. Kennedy Space Center is run by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, better known as NASA. 
Their mandate is to get things off the ground and into outer space. And they've gotten quite good at it. Here at the Space Center, we're surrounded by samples of stupendous spacefaring technologies. From rockets and lunar rovers to the space shuttle. Enormous dishes like this one are used to detect and communicate with objects in outer space, especially satellites. Satellites circling high above the Earth have transformed the modern world. They're the devices that help us predict the weather, keep an eye on the planet below, and even watch live news coverage from around the world. Engineering types like me really like to stay connected, you know. The cluster of silent sentinels here is called the Rocket Garden, a showcase of many different rockets used at the Kennedy Space Center. Rockets have had a long, impressive flight path of evolution. The earliest ones appeared in Asia over 1,500 years ago and didn't have much power. But today's modern rockets, like the powerful Saturn launch vehicle, put out 7 million pounds of thrust or more. That's enough power to loft something bigger than a house up into space. It might look like a toaster with legs, but think again. That's one of the lunar landers used in the Apollo missions. Apollo was a Greek god of sunlight, and the Apollo program lived up to its name, with a series of dazzling space flights in the 1960s that peaked with Apollo 11, the first time humans set foot on the moon. Bye for now. Feel free to call me back for more techno facts. Time to belt up, partner, for a spin around the Indianapolis 500 Speedway here in Indianapolis. Indy race cars are engineered for outrageous speed but a surprising number of common automotive concepts derived from racing technology. Over-the-shoulder seatbelts have first appeared in racing cars as a way to hold the driver firmly in place. Roll bars and energy-absorbing body panels also started with race cars to protect drivers during a crash. Who would have thought that high-risk racing could make regular driving safer for the rest of us? Whoa! Stop me if I'm drooling! These are Indy cars, designed for some seriously mind-bending speed. The first cars that raced here in 1911 reached top speeds of around 80 miles per hour. But, woohoo! Has automobile technology improved since then? Today's Indy cars streak along at over 220 miles per hour. That's practically warp speed! The Indy 500 track makes a winding circuit exactly two and a half miles long, which includes this blazing 1,000 meter straightaway along the grandstands. Originally, the track was paved with brick, but it was eventually resurfaced with smooth asphalt in 1935 to allow for higher speeds. Think they ever get any monster potholes out there? I could spend all day idling around here at the Indianapolis 500 Hall of Fame learning about the raceway. The Indy 500 was first held in 1911 and has run annually during Memorial Day weekend almost every year since. 500 miles of high-speed action tend to draw big crowds and big prize money.
Almost a half a million people come to watch a checkered flag wave over the lucky winning car, which claims a prize as high as three million dollars. Bye for now. Feel free to call me back for more techno facts. Eureka! Ready to make some discoveries at Michigan's Greenfield Village? Let's walk the walk! I love visiting Greenfield Village, a place chock full of history about America's greatest inventive minds. The village is sort of an outdoor museum. 90 acres of land filled with transplanted buildings that were once the homes or workshops of some really innovative folks. Maybe someday I'll set up a workshop here too. Over this way lies the Logan County Courthouse, where Abe Lincoln practiced law years before becoming the 16th president of the United States. Life was pretty low-tech and simple back then, which explains why prairie lawyers like Lincoln had to travel around by horse, visiting the various courthouses of a regional circuit. Today's technology has improved things, making it much easier to get around and stay connected. Now if only we could replace all the lawyers with scientists. Side by side here, we have the Wright Home and Wright Cycle Shop, where the famous Wright brothers worked out their designs for the world's first machine capable of self-propelled flight, the airplane. Obviously, the brothers Wright got it right. If you've had enough of the great outdoors, you can always motor inside to the nearby Henry Ford Museum. There, you'll find over 100 historically cool, uh, I mean significant examples of automotive ingenuity, ranging from an authentic Model T to a moon-hugging lunar rover. Cars have fundamentally changed America in the last century, and Henry Ford had a lot to do with it. This thoughtful statue is none other than... Thomas Edison himself, creator of at least 400 great inventions. The building to the right is Edison's original Menlo Park Laboratory, where he made many of his best-known devices, like the electric light bulb and the phonograph, as well as hundreds of lesser-known things, like the telephone speaker. The brainy fellow held over 1,093 U.S. patents before he retired, which means I, I have some catching up to do. Bye for now. Feel free to call me back for more techno facts. Please gather up. What a hoot! The trains here at Omaha's Union Pacific Railroad Station in the heart of Nebraska get me all steamed up! Please gather all my last hand. One of my favorite figures in history of the Old West has to be Grenville Dodge, the chief engineer of the Union Pacific. He was instrumental in surveying and building many of the crucial rail lines that crossed the western states. Believe me! It's not easy building a straight train track over hundreds of miles of rolling prairie land. Here's the Union Pacific Historical Museum, loaded to the caboose with history and mementos about the UP, the nation's first transcontinental railroad. My favorite is a piece of golden spike used in Promontory, Utah in 1869 to celebrate the completion of construction. The Transcontinental Railroad made it much easier for settlers to travel in the West over the next 40 years. 
This resulted in a lot of growth and progress, but also in a few sad changes, like the rapid disappearance of buffalo herds and native Indian cultures. Then my six come home to my kid brother After you buried me deep in the tomb Tell him these things all what ruined his brother And never the part with the last fatal hang I love hanging out here at the rail yard Pondering the advances in locomotive technology over the years Steam locomotives which burn coal to create steam to drive massive pistons were the name of the game for over a century. Massive models like this classic, Big Boy, were famous for their durability and mountain climbing power. Modern diesel electric models are even stronger. Some can pull 200 cars along at over 75 miles per hour. But carry it over. Nebraska may be known as a farming state, but me, I think of it as a train state. Trains were essential to the expansion of Nebraskan farm towns like Omaha, allowing the transport of farm produce to distant cities. When President Lincoln created the Union Pacific Railroad in 1862, Omaha became its eastern terminus. Train transport and agriculture continue to be essential elements of Omaha life. Bye for now! Feel free to call me back for more techno facts. Just as a reminder, Let's have a look around the sandy Cape May, New Jersey, along the Atlantic coast. I don't see any on the horizon right now, but super tankers and super container ships are a common sight along the stretch of coast. Can you say humongous? Some of these ships stretch over 300 meters long. That's more than three football fields. My baby, my baby, left this, town. this fence may look dull, but it actually serves a clever engineering purpose to keep the Jersey Shore on the Jersey Shore. Erosion poses a constant problem around here, as the ocean steadily washes away the beach. In fact, two previous versions of Cape May's lighthouse had to be rebuilt because of the advancing sea. Erosion control fences like this one were recently installed to hold beach dunes in place and hopefully keep the ocean at bay. Down this way, you can see Cape May Point Light. One of the biggest lighthouses along the Atlantic coast. The latest version was constructed in 1859 and still shines out over the ocean for miles as a warning beacon to offshore ships. Man, we're talking one big light bulb. Bye for now. Feel free to call me back for more techno facts. South Dakota has many dramatic vistas, but Mount Rushmore stands at the head of the class. Big head, that is. Well, I'm Did someone say vertigo? The Iron Mountain Road on the opposite side of Mount Rushmore is quite a heart-stopping adventure. It zigzags up steep slopes and navigates several tunnels and bridges before reaching the top of the mountain, over 500 feet above us. You think building the sculpture was hard? Just getting up there is an engineering feat. The stony faces before us are carved from pure granite, a low-tech material which has some high-tech properties. 
Granite is so hard that dynamite blasts were needed for much of the carving, and it's so tough that weather hardly makes a dent. Over the next 10,000 years, these four presidential heads will erode only a fraction of an inch. Leave and shine, goodbye, old friend. I'm leaving shine, goodbye, old friend. I'm leaving shine. You're looking at the Shrine of Democracy, the faces of four famous presidents carved into the side of Mount Rushmore here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. This famous national monument, created by sculptor Gutzon Berglum, is a memorial to the democratic spirit of the United States and dedicated people who kept the spirit alive. The sculpture took over 14 years to complete, a real act of dedication in itself. From this distance, the heads on Mount Rushmore don't look too big. But stand closer, and you'd realize they're simply huge! George Washington on the left has a head over 60 feet high! The noses of Jefferson and Roosevelt are at least 20 feet tall! And to honest Abe Lincoln, his eyes are about 11 feet wide! Bye for now! Feel free to call me back for more Techno Facts! Well, I'm riding old star.